Hi, I'm Andy Savage. Welcome to One Man and His Meeple. Today, I'll be playing Nemo's War, a solo game by Chris Taylor published by Victory Point Games in 2017. In Nemo's War, you control the Nautilus as you relive key moments from Jules Verne's classic novel 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Under your command, the infamous submarine sails the world's oceans on missions of science, exploration, anti-imperialism or all-out war. Each turn, you face an event, place ships, and then spend a number of actions trying to fulfill Nemo's key motives, be it searching for treasure, adventuring, inciting rebellion, or attacking vessels in your path. In this video, the key motive will be exploration. This motive rewards the player for discovering wonders and science, so we'll be searching for treasure and adventuring a lot. There's no bonus for sinking ships, but even so I'll have to fight, especially towards the end of the game, as being unable to place a ship is grounds for our imperialist opponents to win. So, let's play. Okay, so we're playing the explore motive, which uh, rewards the discovery of wonders and science, but not so much the sinking of ships, especially warships. Um, the explore motive gives us the option to buy the hydro drive at the start of the game as a ship upgrade, and I am doing that by paying two on the crew and one on the hull out of our ship's resources to cover the cost of three there. Um, we are playing on the officer level, so everything is default on the board. The, uh, the blue and the green ship group come in on their spaces, and we start with one action. There is one treasure on each of the major oceans, and one on the adventure deck. So, so yeah, everything's set at default. So let's take our first adventure card, which will be Act 1, the prologue. The facts relating to this apparition entered in various logbooks agreed in most respects as to the shape of the object or creature in question. The run tiring rapidity of its movements, its, surpass, its surprising power of locomotion and the peculiar life with which it seemed endowed. If it was a whale, it surpassed in size all those hitherto classified in science. And it says, I roll a die and place the Nautilus in the corresponding major ocean. So that's two. So we're starting down here in the Eastern Pacific, where we seem to be missing a hidden ship. So let's put that in there. And commence play with the next card. Uh, we're rolling two dice for placement at the start of the game. The Red Sea. The Greek and Latin historians do not speak favourably of the Red Sea. It is, he pretends, a sea subject of two fearful hurricanes strewn with inhospitable islands and which offers nothing good either on its surface or in its depths. And this is a play event and we either pass it or we can take up to two discarded ship tokens if available and place them in empty salvage bo point boxes if available and then fail. Um, we can't do that at the moment and we can't keep it. There are no ships, discarded ships. So we're just going to put that straight in the pass and it's a wonder. So it's worth seven victory points for us. The explore motive, wonders are worth seven. Science is worth four. Liberation, that's these cubes are worth three each. Treasure, each treasure token is worth plus one. Adventure cards are normal. Non-warship sunk score their normal tonnage and the warship sunk score at minus one for each one. So we're discouraged from uh, sinking warships and not really encouraged to sink non-warships at all. We're encouraged to seek out wonders and science. So that was Act 1, uh, the, the first event from Act 1. So now we're going to roll for placement and we've got three and a six, which gets us one, two, three additional action points. And we place hidden ship markers in North Atlantic and the Indian Ocean. Now we're starting in the Eastern Pacific here and we can move two oceans, two consecutive oceans with one move action because we have the hydro drive. Um, but I think to start with, we might as well search for treasure here in the Eastern Pacific. Um, so that's one action to search for treasure and we're gonna stake the crew on it. So we get a plus three dice roll. Uh, if we get, uh, seven or greater we pass and we take some treasure 
If we pass with a 9 to 11, it's a success and we don't get notoriety. And if we get 12 plus, we collect two treasures. So we're looking for 12 plus ideally. So that's 11 plus 3 is 14. So we can take two treasures straight off. We'll remove that token. And our first one is a wonder. That's good. It's the Mariana Trench. And our second one is a two point treasure token. It's cool. We have three actions left. I propose we move with one action. And let's go to the South Atlantic here. And then with our last two action points, I think we're going to take an adventure card from here. In the adventure deck. And if we pass this, we get an additional treasure because of that. So this is the Gulf Stream. Ten days went by in this way. It was only to, on the 1st of May that the Nautilus openly resumed its northbound course after raising the Bahamas at the mouth of the old Bahama Channel. We then went with the current of the sea's greatest river, which has its own banks, fish and temperature. I mean the Gulf Stream. This card is to keep. When the Nautilus is in the South Atlantic, which is where we are, we can pay... We can pass this card and as a free action move to any other ocean except for the European seas and the Arctic Ocean. So that might be useful. And if we pass, it's worth um, four, four victory points at the end of the game. So we definitely want to use it. Uh, we pass that, so we take the treasure for the adventure deck. And this is, uh, we can we keep this and we can discard it to gain one crew or keep it for three treasure. So that might be useful towards the end of the game to if we lose some crew here. We have no actions left, so on to the next event. It's a novel proposal. The first thing I noticed was a range of mountains about 2,000 feet high, the shapes of which were most capricious. I knew that we were nearing the island of Ceylon, the pearl which hangs from the lobe of the Indian Peninsula. This is a nine-point test on which we can uh, stake the hull. If we pass, we reveal an additional Nautilus upgrade card, which is now available for purchase. So we can add to these four cards here, which are available to purchase through salvage ship tokens. Uh, so we can, we can come, uh, add a fifth one to that. So let's stake the hull on this. We're looking for a seven plus now because we get a plus two on the with the uh, ship resources. So that six plus two is only eight. Now if we fail that, the hull will go down to there. I think I'm going to let that fail and take the hull down to that level there. Because the only, the only way we have at the moment of modifying that is to use some of the crew, the, uh, the personalities down here. And I don't want to use those this early in the game. It's only the second event. So we'll take the hit on the hull. So roll for placement. It's a six and a two, so we get four action points. And we're placing hidden ship markers in the Eastern Pacific and again in the Indian Ocean. No trouble placing those yet. So for our first action, I think we should search for treasure in the South Atlantic and we'll put the crew on this one again for a plus three. So that's five plus three is eight. So we're suspected. So we collect a treasure, which is a three point treasure token, but we gain one notoriety. We're caught searching. Remove that gem from So we have uh, three actions left. I think we should move. Let's move to the Indian Ocean. And then I think we should take another adventure with our two actions. Shake down maneuvers. Round the Nautilus, the sea dashed furiously. This is a bad sea, remarked Ned Land. Detestable indeed, and one that does not suit a boat like the Nautilus. Ten point test. Um, on which we can stake the crew and the hull. And if we pass, we receive up to two ship resources or gain two actions or take one of each. If we fail, we lose a Nemo point or lose an action if we have one saved um, or gain two notoriety. So let's put the crew and the hull on this. We've got a plus four, which is, means we need a six or greater on the dice. So that's good. So that's a pass.
So we can gain two ship resources or two actions this turn, or take one of each. I like to take two ship resources. I'd like to get our hull back up to ship shape again, I think. So let's roll for placement. Five and one, so we get four action points and we're placing tokens in the Western Pacific and the European seas. And I think we should search for treasure here in the Indian Ocean. The crew onto this one with a plus three. So that's nine, which is just a regular success. So we just gain one treasure and no notoriety. So there, two point treasure. And um, we remove that treasure token. I think we should now take another adventure card. Do no harm. This is a 10 point test. And if we pass it, we can place three cannibal markers on this card. And it gives us a plus two DRM and one notoriety when we attack. So they attacked me and I had to defend myself. All the same, I was content simply to put the frigate in a condition where it could do me no harm. It won't have any difficulty getting repairs at the nearest port. So let's see what we can do with this. We can put Nemo on this. It's still quite a difficult test. It's a 10 point test, so we need eight or more here. We may have to use Ned Land to bump this or perhaps Professor Aranax. Nope, there we go, 10. Plus two is 12, so that's an easy pass. So we keep that, and we put the three cannibal markers on it. And um, that was the adventure. So unfortunately there's no treasure token on there. So we have one action left. I think we should use, because we can't go through the Suez Canal up into the European seas, we can go around to the Western Pacific from the Indian Ocean. So let's do that. So that's uh, one action to get around to there. Ready to search for treasure next turn as long as there's not a lull. Okay, adventure, the next event. A frigate's demise. Two enormous water spouts crashed onto the deck of the frigate, racing like a torrent from stern to stern, toppling crewmen, breaking spare masts and yard arms from their lashings. It's a play. Add the black background frigate to the Nautilus current ocean and fight it immediately as a free stalk attack action. So that goes in the fail pile and we take the Glasgow and we'll put it there. It's a stalk attack, so we're going to get plus one on our dice roll to attack there, but first the frigate is going to fire on us. Uh, the combat sequence here, so the warships attack, we roll 2d6 versus its attack value, and if we roll uh, less than 6, we suffer hits equal to the lower dice's value. Uh, so we've rolled 8, so they miss us. Uh, now it's our attack on them, so I'm going to stake the crew again for a plus 3, while plus 1 for the stalk attack is plus four and we need a nine or greater. So that was rather easy. I'm going to take this and put it here in the, in the salvage row. We can spend these to buy some of these. Let's talk about these upgrades. The Arcane Library is pretty good. It's a wonder, so it's worth seven victory points and it gives us a plus DRM to search for treasure or to incite uh, rebellions. We have the Electro Power Crew Armor, which we can use once during each bold attack for either a plus one DRM after the dice, or we can destroy the card for a plus two. Periscope device is nice. It allows us to make consecutive bold attacks uh, without gaining notoriety. And we can also make consecutive stalk attacks but we do gain notoriety for that. And the other one is a monstrous design, which, uh, which I do like too, because it allows us to keep the notoriety down. It's gained one fewer notoriety per ship token that we sink from a stalk attack. Um, we should 
no, there was notoriety on the, there was no notoriety on the Glasgow that we sank. So we don't gain notoriety from that. But I think out of all these, um, the Arcane Library might be the one I'm going to go for, for the victory points and for the plus one to search. So that was our event. And now we're going to roll for placement. Uh, so a one and a five. We've got four actions again. We're doing well with actions here. And we need to place hidden ship markers in Ocean 1 in the Western Pacific and 5 in the European Seas. Now, the European Seas is full up, so we can place a token in an adjacent ocean. So we shall move that into the North Atlantic. And we have four actions to spend. So let's, as usual, let's search here. We'll stake the crew on this again. So that's nine plus three is 12. So that's uh, Eureka and collect two treasures. There's another two points. And uh, it's a retain one. We can discard it to gain one reroll or keep it for four treasure. So a reroll might be useful. Uh, we've removed that treasure token. Now, I was talking about uh, going for one of these ship modifiers. Now, you can see the cheapest of these and the one that we want, the Arcane Library, costs two. But if we can get 12 or more on a refit roll, we can upgrade for one fewer salvage. And to help get uh, to modify the dice, we can spend treasure. So if we spend this three point treasure and have the crew assist, that's a plus six on that dice roll. So if we get six or greater, then we can refit for one cheaper, so we could get that arcane library. It's maybe still a little risky. I think we've nearly finished searching as well now. Let's. I think we're going to have some ships appearing around here soon. If we get another placement in the European Sea, we're going to get some ships appearing. So let's hold on. Let's get some more salvage and make, make sure of this. But now let's spend an action to move one, two into the North Atlantic. And let's search for treasure there, I think. So we're going to do the normal crew assist for three points. Uh, again, that's a, a Eureka. 11 plus 3 is higher than 12. So another one point treasure. Well, our first one point treasure. And we can discard this for one action or keep it for two victory point, uh, two treasure points, which is going to be useful. Maybe discarding it for one action in a lull round. Talking of lull rounds, that happens when these two dice on the placement are the same. I'm going to preserve one action point for the moment in case we have a lull round coming up. Because all we can do is move right now. So let's move on to the next round. We can preserve one action point through to the next round. The earth wants not new continents, but new men. May the contemplation of so many wonders extinguish forever the spirit of vengeance. May the judge disappear and the philosopher continue the peaceful exploration of the sea. This is a nine point test, which Nemo can assist for a plus two. And if we pass, we can reset the Nemo ship resource marker to its determined space, but we're already well above and determined. If we fail, we lose a Nemo point and gain two notoriety. But if we pass it, it's a wonder, so we will get seven victory points for it. So we're going to go for this. Well, we have no choice. We have to go for it. We're going to stake Nemo. We want seven or greater. That's not. That's a six. 
So we can either discard that treasure for a reroll, or we can use Ned Land here to add one. So let, let's spend Ned. It gets us a notoriety point, but it makes this a pass. And uh, we're not going to do anything with Nemo because we're above determined. So that was the that was the event for this round. Now let's roll for placement three and six. Right. So from three, three is full, so we can place in an adjacent ocean, and I think I'm going to place it up here in the Arctic. And the six is also full, uh, and we can't place it in the Pacific, so we're going to place it in the Cape of Good Hope there. And we have three action points. The one we saved, that gives us four this round. So for one, I think we should move into the European seas, and then one to search for treasure there before any ships turn up. And then we've, we've searched for all the treasure before there are any ships. So let's put the crew for a plus three. Again, that's a good one, that's Eureka. So two more treasures. We can discard this one to gain one reroll or keep for four treasure. And uh, standard three. Now there's no point hanging around in the European Sea. Well, there kind of is, because if we have to place ships there, we can put the passenger ships here, or the non-war ships here, and then just pick them off for easy salvage. So let's, let's do an adventure. As Master wishes, in Conseil I had a seasoned specialist in biological classification, an enthusiast who could run with acrobatic agility up and down the whole ladder of branches, groups, classes, subclasses, orders, families, genera, subgenera, species and varieties. And we keep this card. And if he's still in play, which he is, during any one future action phase, we can spend up to three actions to collect plus one treasure for each such action spent. And then afterwards, or if when Conseil is not in play, we put this into the fail pile. At the end of the game, we pass if unused, but it is not worth anything. Has no victory points there. So that was our adventure, and um, we're going to save one action there in case of a lull, I think. So let's move on to the next test. So the next event is the Indian Ocean. Now we begin the second part of this voyage under the seas. The first ended in that moving scene at the Coral Cemetery, which left a profound impression on my mind. And so Captain Nemo would live out his life entirely in the heart of this immense sea, and even his grave lay ready in its impenetrable depths. It's another keep, and when the Nautilus is in the Indian Ocean, we can pass the card to gain one Nemo and one Notoriety, and at the end of the game, fail if unused. Now I'm going to put that there, where you can't see it, so I won't put it there. I'm going to mark this with a dice, and mark just as a counter, and mark the Indian Ocean, just to remind me when we get to the Indian Ocean that there's a, a relevant card for that ocean. So that was our uh, the event for this round. Um, we only have one action point, and we are placing hidden ship tokens in one, and I think we'll have to go to the Central Pacific there, and two, the Eastern Pacific. Now we have two actions. Not much to do in the European seas, there are no ships to sink. Now we're going to have some ships start appearing pretty soon, I think. I still don't want to risk that um, the salvage roll. We've got a three point treasure we can spend on that to give us a plus six. 
it would be a nice bonus to not have to spend all the salvage, but I don't want to have to rely on it. So we've got two actions. I think we should just do an adventure here. Commerce Scare. The Shipping and Mercantile Gazette, the Lloyd's List, the Packet Boat and the Maritime and Colonial Review. All the papers devoted to insurance companies which threatened to raise their rates of premium were unanimous on this point. Public opinion had been pronounced. So we play this card and we perform this many reactions. Four and pass the card if the motive is war or anti-imperialism, which it isn't. Or two reactions and fail if motive is explore or science. So our ex motive is explore. So we're going to play two reactions. And for each reaction, we must either gain plus one notoriety or flip any non-warship token if available to show its warship side. But there are no non-warship cards. So I suppose we're going to have to gain two notoriety. And that goes into the fail. Um... So we're all out of actions. So on to the next event. An underwater coal field. Now then, right at this pot, right at this spot, the sea covers entire forests that sank underwater in prehistoric times. Today, turned to stone, transformed into carbon fuel, they offer me inexhaustible coal mines. It's another keep card, and when the Nautilus is in the North or South Atlantic, we can fail this card and gain two hull. At the game's end, pass if unused. Now it's worth four, five, six victory points to us. Uh, gaining two hull could be worth four points or could save us the game if we get that bad. So we're going to keep that one down there. And I'm going to put dice on to mark the North and South Atlantic has a relevant card to go with it. So that was our test, that was the event. Now ship placement three. Now three, we cannot place a hidden ship marker in the North Atlantic or any adjacent oceans. So we now reveal a hidden ship in this ocean or an adjacent ocean. And to do that, we look first, we pick one of these ships at random. Now these are only white, mostly um, non-war ships and a few there's one, there's a, a, a warship, the Ironclad Lascar. And we can place it in the north. Oh, hang on. There is a, I didn't see that. We don't have to do that at all. We can place a hidden ship marker in the South Atlantic. And six now is actually, there are no spaces to place hidden ship markers. So we will draw again. I suppose really we should have the Huascar, but I've put it back now. We've got the Lord Clyde instead. An ironclad out of Britain. He's got a seven point attack and ten point fence. I'm going to put it in the Indian Ocean itself, I think. I think what I'm going to do is fill the Indian Ocean with warships. If we draw any passenger ships or non warships for there, we're going to put them out here in the Western Pacific or in maybe in the European seas. But I might just fill the European seas up with warships as well. So that was ship placement. We've got three action points this round. I was rather hoping for a non-warship to sink. We have no treasurer on the board. We could go down and try and take out, oh, we can't get to the Lord Clyde this turn anyway, because it's too far away. So I think we should maybe do an adventure and then just wait. Ocean Wealth. I understand, Captain. I understand your delight at strolling in the midst of this wealth. You're a man who gathers his treasure in person. No museum in Europe owns such a collection of exhibits from the ocean. It's a play, we can pass the card and take one notoriety and then place one uh, treasure token in each of the six major oceans, which is rather good because uh, pass it, gain one notoriety. We can just refill these back up again. One, two, three, four, five, 
and six. And now I think we should spend our last action point to search for treasure again here in the European seas. So we'll have the crew to assist. So six, nine is just a plain success and we collect one treasure. Discard and lose one resource or character. That's a mean one. Um, I think I'm going to lose one Nemo down to there, which is a sacrifice potentially of seven victory points because he's worth two wonders at full strength. Not entirely happy, but the, I want to keep the characters as well because they're really useful for emergency roles. Um, anyway, we took that treasure. We're out of action points. So let's take our next event card. Act two, so that was the end of act one. I was admiring the magnificent aspect of the ocean when Captain Nemo appeared. He did not seem to be aware of my presence and began a series of astronomical observations. Then when he had finished, he went and leant on the cage of the watch light and gazed abstractedly at the ocean. Uh, so for the first intermission, we add the dark yellow reinforcement ship group. That's these four ships to the ship pool. And continue play with the next card. And from now on, we add a black die to the die pool for placement. So we now place ships in each one of these oceans. And we have to draw another card for the event. The treasure fleet. Laden with their precious booty, the men return to the Nautilus, disposed by, disposed by their burden, disposed of their burden, and went back to the inexhaustible fishery of gold and silver. Play, and we fail this card and place the sunken treasure fleet token and the treasure available token in a random major ocean. After you successfully search there, gain the ocean's treasure and the sunken treasure fleet, which grants you two additional silver uprising cubes, which give you a plus two DRM for future insight actions. So we fail that and we roll a dice to see which ocean we're going to place the sunken treasure. So that's one. Now we can't place a treasure token in one because... I think we should place the sunken treasure fleet there and then the treasure token in one of the adjacent oceans. And I'm gonna place it there in the Arctic Ocean, I think. So now we roll for ship placement. So we have a two and two fives. Now that's a lull round. So we place two um ships into the European seas, but we don't place the black one because it's a lull round. So let's draw. There are no spaces to play hidden uh, ship tokens. First one is a passenger ship, the Thermopylae, which is a male ship. And I'm gonna place that straight there where we are. And the second one is a, the Numancia, an ironclad warship, which I'm going to place down here in the Indian Ocean. We're allowed to place, because of the Suez Canal, uh, the European Seas and the Indian Ocean are connected for placement. We get no action points this round because it's a lull round. There are a couple of other things we have to do in a lull turn. We place a treasure available token in the Doubles Ocean which is good. And on the adventure deck, and then we check up rising cubes. Now, if we had any uprising cubes, we'd have to roll whether we keep or discard them, but we don't have any. We receive zero action points. I think now I want to discard this treasure token for one action. And Because it's a lull round, we can take an adventure action for one action point. Uh, because we're in a sea with no exposed warships, we don't get a minus modifier on that. If we're down here in the Indian Ocean, we get a minus two for the two warships. We don't. So let's go for this adventure card. Now there's treasure on it. Uh, 
an underwater forest. Captain Nemo invites Professor Aaron Ma Aranax on a hunting trip that will take place tomorrow morning in his Crespo Island forests. It's a nine-point test on which we can stake Nemo and the crew for a plus five. And if we pass, we collect two treasure, which is great. So we should be able to do that, hopefully. We've got a plus five. We've passed that with flying colors. So we're going to collect two treasure for the underwater forest and one for this adventure. Uh, so treasure. Discard and draw two treasure tokens. So we're still on the first one. Discard and draw two treasure tokens. What are the odds of that? So we've got, we're now drawing three for the first treasure and then another one and then another one. So we're drawing five treasure tokens now. I think it's the lost city of Duarca. So that's one. Uh, it's, we can discard this for an action or keep for two. That's the second treasure. Three for the third. Discard to gain one Nemo or keep for four treasure points. That's certainly going to come in useful later on. That was the fourth. And the last treasure is a nice five point treasure there. So that was a good round. We gained a whole lot of treasure. Not bad for a lull round. Uh, we have no action points, so we're on to the next event. A shortage of air. How long, I asked, will the oxygen in the air tanks enable us to breathe on board? The captain looked me straight in the eye. After tomorrow, he said, the air tanks will be empty. It's a 10 point test on which we can stake the crew. It's worth a few victory points, which is good. If we fail it, we're gonna lose a crew or decide to skip the action phase and we receive zero action points. So we better pass this. We've got a plus three from the crew and that's seven plus three is 10. So that's a pass. Now we're gonna roll for dice placement, another lull round. Okay, so a place ship tokens only for the white dice. So, same as last time. First is a passenger ship, the chance, which we're going to stick there in the European seas. And the second is another one, which I think we're going to stick there. We place a treasure token in, well, we would place a treasure token in the European sea, but we can't, and there are no, no spaces in the adjacent sea, so we lose that one, and we place one on the adventure deck. We would check uprising cubes, but there aren't any, and then we receive zero action points. Now, like last time, I think I want to discard this for one action and do that adventure again. Do another adventure, rather. At full steam, the Abraham Lincoln's speed increased. Its masts trembled down to their blocks, and swirls of smoke are barely squeezed through the narrow funnels. We keep this, and after sinking a warship in the North or South Atlantic, we pass it. Otherwise, at the game's end, we fail. So I'm gonna put that one with that because that's another North and South Atlantic one marked with the same dice. And we get this treasure. It's another wonder, another seven victory points. And we're out of actions. So on to the next event. The whales, trying to crush the Nautilus with their sheer mass. Through the windows, you could see their enormous mouths paved with teeth. Their fearsome eyes is a nine point test on which we can use the crew and the hull for a plus five dice roll modifier. And if we pass, we collect two treasure or gain one crew. So let's see if we can pass it first. We've got a plus five on this, um, barely. So should we take two treasure or should we gain our crew back up to fresh? I think we should take the treasure at this point. If 
first one is a two. Second one here, we can discard this to reveal one upgrade or keep for three. So that what that means is we can take another Nautilus upgrade out of this pile and, and make it available for purchase. So placement. This time we have, that was a one, we have three action points and we're placing ships in ocean number one which has no space, so we're going to pull one of these out. It's the city of Adelaide, which we will place there, straight in the Western Pacific. Three, North Atlantic, there's a space there for a hidden ship. And six, the good old Indian Ocean, where we know there is no space passenger ship, which I am going to put into the European Sea. So now you can see what I've done is filled the European Seas up with relatively easily sinkable passenger ships or um, non-war ships. There's a freighter and a mail ship there. So we can attack them without gaining too much notoriety and we can get a few salvage points and pick up a few of these upgrades without them firing on us. So we have three actions. I think for the first one, we are going to attack the Donau with a stalk attack to keep our notoriety down. It's a bit slower. With the bold attack, you can chain attacks for a single action, but you gain notoriety for every one. So this time we're going for the, the Donau. We get plus one, for the stalk attack, and plus three for the crew, giving us a four on this, and we need eight or more. So six plus four is 10. So we've sunk the Don out and we're going to put it there. The refit is affected by warships. So we could now go for that refit attempt. And um, spend some of our salvage and get the arcane library to help us search and go around and pick up the rest of this treasure again. So let's do that. Let's spend, I think we want to wait for another lull action. No, no, it's refit. Yeah, no, refits are two action points and one in a lull. Maybe we should just clear some more space here in the European seas this round. Yeah, okay, let's have another attack action on the Thermopylae. Again, we're going plus three from the crew, plus one. Oh, hang on. No, there was no notoriety on the Donau. So we're going for a plus four on this one. Four plus four is eight, which is just enough to sink that. I think we'll stick that in salvage as well for now. And for our last action, do we, have we pushed our luck enough? Tanking out these ships. We haven't got great rolls. Um, we get two notoriety for the Thermopylae as well. Let's spend our last action searching for treasure. Or should we save our last action in case there's a lull and then we can do our refit nice and cheap. We've had a couple of lulls. Let's save our last action in case there's a lull. Let's go on to the next event. The Coral Realm. Captain Nemo and his men had come to bury their companion in this communal resting place on the inaccessible ocean floor. It's a 10 point test on which we can use the crew. And if we pass, we gain two crew. And if we fail, we lose two. We lose one. But we will also lose two for the uh, failing on a, on, with the uh, assist. Spending the ship's resource. Anyway, that's eight plus three is 11, so that's a pass. So we get that and then gain two crew, which is excellent. So that was our last. No, that wasn't our last action. That was the event for the next round. So ship placement three, four, and five. So three, there is now space in the European seas for hidden ship markers. 
Uh, four, we can place a hidden ship marker in Cape Horn. And five, we can place a, shi a hidden ship marker straight there in the European seas. So no more boats materializing, so that was good. Now, did we search for this treasure, I think, didn't we? And we have two action points from that. Now, I think now we're going to spend the two on the refit. So we're going for a refit. And I'm going to chuck in. I don't really need to bolster that much. So I'm just going to go just have the crew assisting on this one. So we need a seven or greater. Ideally, we would go for 12. Oh, that's excellent. 11. Oh, you can't see it. 11. Realized all my dice roll have been off the screen. Never mind. So that was 11 plus 3 is 14. So our refit comes in for one fewer salvage. So we could have the monstrous design, which means we get one fewer notoriety per ship token. And Yeah, I think we're going to take that. I was originally going to go for the Arcane Library, but... No, no, I am. I'm going to take the Arcane Library. We'll just lose one of these. So that's removed from the game. I'm going to take the Arcane Library. Hopefully we're not going to get into too much fighting at the moment. There's still, still some space. So that was our two point refit. We have one action left. And we could sail somewhere else or we can save it for the next round in case there's another lull. Let's save it. Let's go for another round. A mass execution. The poor ship then sank more swiftly. Its mastheads appeared laden with victims, then its cross trees bending under clusters of men, and finally the peak of its mainmast. Then the dark mass disappeared, and with it a crew of corpses dragged under by fearsome eddies. We play this, we fail the card, and gain 1d3 of notoriety. So 1d3 means half of a 1d6 rounded up. So that is 3. 1, 2, 3 notoriety. Not a great card. Roll for ship placement. One, three, and five. So one, there's still space down here. Three, we are going to have to draw a ship for that one. It's the General Grant. And... I think, I think I'm going to put that in the North Atlantic there. Because I think we might be heading that way. And five, which is where we are. Let's draw a, another ship. It's another warship. It's the Buffel. And I'm going to stick that down in the Indian Ocean. Which is pretty much a no-go zone at the moment. We can go down there and do this event to gain one Nemo and the notoriety. But I don't have any interest in fighting those warships. So we get two action points, leaving us three. So we can go for another refit and try and pick up the monstrous design now. Or let's spend one to sail to the North Atlantic and then one to search. So we get a plus one DRM because the arcane library, we're gonna use the crew, which gives us plus three, making plus four in total. Uh, so what do we have there? 8 plus 4 is 12. So we gain 2 treasure. It's another wonder. The city of Kambat. And a 3 points. Uh, we have 1 action left. We could try and fight the General Grant. Or we can sail on perhaps. 
or we could incite. Insight action will put a cube in one of these two spaces and would win us, uh, earn us another three victory points at the end of the turn. At the end of the game, if they were still there, because in a lull action, you have to roll to maybe perhaps lose those. I think maybe at this point we should sail on to the Western Pacific. And pick up, uh, try and pick up the sunken treasure fleet, which will give us a bonus on a further bonus on liberation, inciting uh, liberation. So, what can we do here? Let's. I don't know how we we can spend the underwater coal field to gain two hull, but it's already it's only it's only knocked down one. I think we'll keep that card for the moment. The other thing we can do is after sinking a warship there, we pass that card. Let's... I'm not going to move now. We're going to save that action for the next round. Just in case there's another lull. And um, so we're going for another event. Captain Nemo's Thunderbolt, where he electrifies the surface of the Nautilus. When the first islander laid hands on the companionway railing, he was flung backward by some invisible power. Lord knows what. He ran off, howling in terror and wildly prancing around. An eight-point test on which we can stake Nemo and the hull for a plus four. And if we pass it, we gain one notoriety and collect a treasure. So an eight-point test. We've rolled eight naturally, so easy. Pass that, gain one notoriety and one treasure. Now we're nearly at the point where these blue ships are going to get added. It's not such a big deal. Right, so the treasure we have pulled is a three point treasure. And now we're going to roll for ship placement. A, right, so we've got two in Ocean 1 and one in ancient, Ocean 3, and we get two actions. So Ocean 1, there is nowhere to place a hidden ship marker anymore, so we're going for a draw of a ship. And it's another passenger ship. Uh, it's the Zealand. I think we're going to stick it here. Um, I want to leave some space. Uh, Indian Ocean's got plenty of space. So another one for Ocean number 1, but I might move this into the Central Pacific. This is a, uh, a warship. I'm going to stick it down here in the South Pacific because I'm not really interested in going down there at the moment. Although, actually, I might stick this in the Central Pacific because South Pacific is a good place to go and raise a rebellion because you can only ever get one warship in there for testing the um, checking the uprising cubes. And Ocean 3 is where we are. Uh, there's still no space to place a hidden, a hidden ship token. The Scotia, let's stick that there. So what I'm trying to do is create pools of non-warships that we can go and pick off easily later on when we need space and to create ghettos of warships that we're never going to visit. We have no intention of going back to the Indian Ocean at this point. Maybe go down there and pick one off just to, to get the, um, the, the tonnage, but probably not even that. So we have three actions. Let's, do we want to go to the Arctic Ocean and pick up that treasure on the way? That would be one, two, actions now let's go let's sail straight through to the western pacific and search for this treasure for another action point so we get a plus one and i'm going to put the crew on it for a plus three making four so we're trying what we're trying to do is picking up that sunken treasure fleet so that's nine plus four is 13 so we get two treasure tokens the lost mayan city of another wonder worth another seven victory points 
and uh, another four pointer. That's good. And we get this sunken treasure fleet, which gives us these two silver cubes and it gives us plus two DRM to incite for rebellion. Now, what I don't really want to do is put rebellion cubes in these big spaces where we're going to place a lot of ships because we'll probably lose them as soon as there's a lull. What I would like to do is put them in places like the South Pacific and um, probably Central Pacific and the Cape of Good Hope. We're not going to get a lot of these anyway, so that will probably be all we'll do. Do we have one action left? Not really any need to sink any of these ships at the moment and no need to move out of the Western Pacific. So we're just going to rest there and do the next action, go into the next event. A sacrifice to the gods. I am the law and I am the judge. I am the oppressed and there is the oppressor. Through him I have lost all that I loved, cherished and venerated. Country, wife, children, father and mother. I saw all perish. All that I hate is there. Say no more. So this is not a good one. We fail and lose at least one non-Nemo resource or character if available. And for each one lost or sacrificed, we gain one Nemo and one notoriety. So basically we're swapping something else for a Nemo point. And one notoriety. It's, it's not great. It's not bad. So there's our notoriety. What are we going to swap in for a Nemo? I think we'll just put the crew down to fresh. And put Nemo up there, which is an, this is worth seven victory points. And this is a loss of four victory points as it stands at the end of the game. So it's a net gain of three. And roll for ship placement. Three, four, and four. So three. So another warship. Where are we going to place this one? I don't really want to place it in the North Atlantic. Let's, let's bung it in the Pacific coast there, which is connected by the Transcontinental Railroad. Um, four, down here, South Atlantic. Got a few options where to place stuff there. The Arapiles, let's put that in the, in Cape Horn. Another place we don't really want to go. And another one for four and hope it's a white one. Time walled. We will put that. We can either put that up in the North Atlantic or just leave it here in the South Atlantic. Let's leave it there. Spread them around a bit. Um, okay. So we get one action point this round for that. So we could sail back to the Arctic Ocean and pick up that treasure, or we could sail down to the South Pacific and incite a Maori resistance, perhaps, which would be worth three victory points at the end of the game if it's still there. What's better for victory points would be to sail to the Eastern Pacific and pick up treasure. I think, and then maybe through to the South Atlantic and pick up treasure. So uh, one action to sail down to the Eastern Pacific. And I think I'm going to save that action point and search next round. I don't like leaving on zero action points when there's not really much point searching this going in this round. So let's take the next event. The Chinese treasure fleet. Monsieur Aranax, a century before Europe's age of exploration, the Ming emperor achieved suzerainty with the voyages of his great treasure fleet. China was a preeminent naval power and I'm charting their routes to the south and west of China. They say treasure available token in each of the Western Pacific and Indian oceans. So Western Pacific and Indian Ocean. Now I believe standard rules for treasure placement apply and we can place that in an adjacent ocean. Let's 
Let's put that back up in. Uh, these are both kind of dead ends. They're all there. Let's place that in the Cape of Good Hope. And then that gives us a reason to go in here and incite some rebellion. If the Nautilus is in or a single move away from either of these oceans, no. Pass the card and collect one treasure. Otherwise, fail and gain one Nemo or one crew. That's not bad. It's worth a few victory points, but gaining that crew back is also worth a few victory points. So, ship placement. That is a three and two sixes, so we'll get three action points. And let's place a ship in or around the North Atlantic. Another passenger ship. So I think we will put the Pequod, Pequod, a whaler into three and then two for six. Two for the Indian Ocean. Another passenger. Let's put the Gange, or I presume, into the Cape of Good Hope. And another one. It's a warship at the Fujiyama. I'm going to put this Japanese frigate up here in the European seas. It's not too hard to sink. So maybe we'll go and pick that up. Okay, so we have four action points. So I'm thinking search, move, search, and save one. Maybe we should have put, we couldn't put that one in the South Atlantic. We must try and keep an eye open to put a, an easy looking warship into the South Atlantic or the North Atlantic so that we can sink it for this, for this card. Okay, so first time search in the Eastern Pacific. So we're going to put the crew on it for a plus three and we've got plus one for the arcane library and that's 13, so we gain two treasure for that. Plenty of treasure going on here. This is good. There are some bad ones as we've seen, but they're not coming out. Discard for one action or keep for two. Those are handy. So we've got a couple of these re-rolls. We've got an upgrade, crew, and a Nemo. Let's consider those towards the end of the game, whether we want to cash those in. So let's now move to the, where are we? Search, move, search. Yeah, move to the South Atlantic. We can go two spaces because of the hydro drive and then one action to search there. Exactly the same, we're on a plus four. So that seven plus four is 11, which is just a single treasure. Oh, discard and gain three notoriety. So one, two, three, and these four blue ships are added to the ship pool. And we're gonna save this last um, action point. In case of a lull, move on to the next round. Act three, second intermission. The Nautilus went at a frightful pace, 40 miles an hour, it literally tore through the water. Where was Captain Nemo? Had he succumbed? Where were his companions dead? Were his companions dead with him? So at this point, we get the chance to change Nemo's motive, which I'm not going to do. I'm going to stick. We change this to one of the others, but I'm going to stick and explore. Or select a Nautilus upgrade card for purchase. Now, it doesn't mean we get it. It means we just add it to this row. And... one do we fancy? So we could have, there's some, some there that are good against warships. Some steam torpedoes. We 
can make one free torpedo attack attack at the Nautilus location. Roll two d six and sink the targeted non warship on a five plus or a targeted warship on a six plus. After your first miss, you only roll one d six. That's not bad. Looking at victory points, that's probably the best one as well. Double hull. We gain an additional one DRM when exerting the hull resource. A fog machine, uh, we can we can discard it to decrease our notoriety. Our notoriety is not really a problem. These are all quite expensive now, apart from the double hull and the fog machine. Let's stick out steam torpedoes. Yeah, why not? Um, right, so here we are at the orange reinforced ship group to the pool and continue playing. Now we take another white die and add it to our placement. We determine, we choose any two of the white dice to determine action points or a lull turn. Okay, next card. Captain Nemo's Diaries. This one's a wonder, so we quite like... Oh, this is the one. For my part, I did not wish to bury with me my curious and novel studies. I had now the power to write the true book of the sea, and this book, sooner or later, I wished to see daylight. So we keep this card, and then after the, final, after the finale card, um, we have another test, and it allows us to gain one Nemo or lose one Nemo. So something to do after the end of the game there. Okay, so we're going to be placing a lot more ships now. We're rolling four die and we place on all of them. Unless it's a lull turn, in which case we disregard the black one. So let's go for this. Thank you, Alexa. You're welcome. Three, four, five, and six. Right, so for three. It's the point we're gonna we're gonna have to start clearing some spaces, I think. So that's the America. Um, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna put this one up there in the Arctic Ocean. And the one for four. But we still actually have a gap down there in the Eastern Pacific. Obviously, not rolling a lot of twos this game. The Aga Aga. Agamemnon. I'm going to place that in four itself. Five, one for the European seas up here. We're going to place, that's the Hannah Moore, another passenger ship. Which I'm going to put here in the North Atlantic. Reserving the European seas as an overflow for the Indian Ocean, I think. And six. Is the Hercules. Capital ship. We're going to stick that up there. Okay, so we can have two action points. And I think we're going to sail down to the Cape of Good Hope. Search for the treasure and incite a rebellion. But first we might sink the Gange because that will make our uh, rebellion harder. We don't do that. So, right, one action point. Sail down to the Cape and another action point. Let's sink, let's attack the Gange. We also get one treasure if we sink this. So put the crew on it for plus three. We're gonna make a stalk attack to make it a plus four. We don't have any other bus. Oh, we do have this. Which gives us a plus two DRM and one notoriety when we attack. We might as well use it, or unless we save it for warships later on. 
This is only an eight and we're on a plus three. So let's do this. Um, seven plus three is 10. So we sink the gange in the cape, which we can place in the, either in the South Atlantic here or the Indian Ocean, or we can keep it for salvage. Uh, we're going to gain one notoriety for that anyway. Let's put it there. And then for our last action, we're going to incite. Um, no, let's search for this treasure first. In fact, let's wait for next turn. Save that action point for next turn. Because if we get a lull round, we can do a, a cheap a refit. Okay, so the next card is Troubled Dreams. I tried to keep my eyes open, but they closed in spite of me. I was in the grip of anguish halluc hallucinations. It's an eight point test with which Nemo can help us for plus two. If we pass, we keep it and we can then pass the card to change any one die's result to any other result that we choose. And if we fail, it just fails. So, so we're looking for six or more. That's exactly it. So we'll keep troubled dreams. We must remember that as a dice roll modifier. Okay, so ship placement. Two, three, two twos and three, two, two twos and two threes. And we can take a lull round this turn which I think I might do. So we disregard the black die. We take, um, we place ship tokens only for the white dice. So in one in two, we're gonna place this hidden die marker. And then in three, we've got space to overflow into the South Atlantic there. So, right, so it's the Victoria, the powerful capital ship. Oops. Not quite the simple warship we were hoping for in the South Atlantic. But that's uh, that card's only worth two victory points anyway, so it's not the end of the world if we don't get that. And we need... So that was one in two. We need another one in three. And... Um, We can't reveal a hidden ship. We must uh, flip a white non-warship in that ocean or an adjacent ocean. So let's flip the chance to its gray side. We don't really care about the European seas at the moment. So that was two and two in three. So that was fine. And it's a lull round, so we must take place a treasure available in three. And we must check up rising cubes, which we don't have any. We receive zero action points. Oh, we also put a treasure up here on the adventure deck. And I'm going to use our single action point that we have there to do a refit. And we're going to try and pick up monstrous design i think because we're going to need to start clearing some of these ships so we're going to put the crew on this for a plus three uh, so that's six plus three is nine which means it's a success and we gain an upgrade so we can have the monstrous design which saves us one notoriety on each action and costs us all three of those ships Okay, so that's our actions for that round. Next event, accident or incident. At three o'clock in the morning, I was awoken by a violent collision. I sat up in bed, listening in the darkness, and then was suddenly hurled into the middle of my stateroom. Apparently the Nautilus had gone aground, then healed over sharply. A nine-point test with the hull assisting for plus two. If we pass, we can keep it, and then... 
We can fail the card after any future 2d6 roll for a plus 2 DRM as emergency help. If we fail, we lose the hull and one keep card in our tableau. So it's a bad one to fail, but it's only a 9. And we've got a plus 2 from the hull there. That's not good though, that's 6. Do we have a re-roll? Let's discard this treasure for a re-roll. That's better. Double six, 12. So that's an easy pass. So we keep this one and it's a plus two DRM. And we've got another one that's DRM modifier, isn't it? Haven't we? Hmm. Okay. Roll for ship placement. And we got two, three, four, and six. So we get four action points from the two and the six. And we're placing ships in two. Change your room in two in the Eastern Pacific. We're going to stick the Royal Adelaide freighter in there. Whoops, that goes the wrong place. Three up here in the North Atlantic. We are flipping a white one. So we're going to flip that one. Four down here in the South Atlantic. We've got some space there for a hidden ship marker. And six, the Indian Ocean. We can reveal a ship either in the Western Pacific or the Cape where we are. It's the Triumph, a whaler. I'm going to stick that there and probably fight it. Did we search for this treasure? Can't remember. No, we went for the refit, didn't we? We haven't searched for that treasure yet. So we've got plenty of action points this round. I think our first one, I'm going to attack the Triumph for the Stork attack. We're going to put the crew on it for plus three. We have uh, no extra. Could try the cannon. We could. Ah, hang on. When we sank the. I'm still looking at the Triumph and you get one treasure, but when we sank the Gange, we also got one treasure. I'll take that now. Uh, we can discard it to gain another Nemo point or keep it for four. So that's good. And now we're going to go for the Triumph as well for three, four. So that's a sink. Sunk the Triumph. I don't think we're going to go for any more upgrades at this point. Let's put that in the Indian Ocean there. So that was uh, first action point for the attack. One action point to search for treasure. We're going to use plus three, plus four with the Arcane Library. So that's eight. So we gain one notoriety and gain the treasure. Oh, we also gain a treasure for the Triumph. So first one for the Triumph, two points. And second one for the treasure itself, three points. And now I'm going to incite some rebellion in the diamond mines of South Africa on the Cape of Good Hope. So we get a plus two to incite. We can, we can extend, exert a ship resource. So we're going to go plus three for the crew. We can also spend treasure and this will help us get our notoriety down. We've still got a few points, but it won't hurt a few points spare before the green ships are added and certainly tons before we get defeat here. But it won't hurt to get that notoriety down, I don't think. So let's spend a three point treasure. Now, you know what? I'm not going to spend any treasure. We've got a three, we've got a plus five. Just going to go for it. That seven plus five is 12. Um, so we place a revolt, a rebellion cube there, and our notoriety goes down two. We have one action left, which I think we're going to keep for now. I think next round we might sail through. The Western Pacific. So 
So anyway, next event. A pearl worth 10 million. There, between its leaf-like folds, I saw a loose pearl as big as a coconut. Its globular shape, perfect clarity, and wonderful orient made it a jewel of incalculable value. Carried away by curiosity, I stretched out my hand to take it, weigh it, fondle it. When in the Indian Ocean, for one action, we can do a 10-point test, and if we pass, we collect three treasure. And if we fail, we gain one Notoriety. Now, the trouble with the Indian Ocean is these warships will adversely affect our test rolls. So we'll get a minus three. But we'll keep that anyway. At the game's end, we pass if unused, and it's worth um, four, five victory points for us anyway. Uh, put that there to get in the way too badly. I think that's okay. So ship placement, um, two, three, four, and six again. So two, placing a ship. It's another warship, so we'll stick that in the Central Pacific. Um, three, I think we're going to have to flip a white ship. Now we can either flip the Arctic or flip, we can just turn the South Atlantic now, I think, we'll disregard the South Atlantic from now on. Maybe go and try and take that ironclad. If we had the magnetic mines, but we don't. So that was three. Four, we can place a hidden ship marker there in the good, Cape of Good Hope. And then six, let's see what we draw. It's a it's a passenger ship, so let's stick that up there in the Western Pacific. Okay. So how many action points have we got? Four from the two and the six, plus the one we kept is five, so that's nice. Let's Where should we go? What should we do? So this one sinking a warship in North and South Atlantic is only worth two victory points. This one we can gain two hull from the North or South Atlantic. So we could sail up to the North Atlantic and do that one. This one we can gain one Nemo in the Indian Ocean, but that's he's already full. That's our finale. Let's put this Indian Ocean one together with that and the finale one over there. So there, there is this one for the DRM, uh, the cannonballs against the uh, battleship, against the warship. But we do have to take a hit first, and I don't fancy that. And we could do consails as master wishes and get three we can spend three actions for three treasure before we use consail let's do that so we're going to use this card now uh, we're going to spend up to three actions so one to take a treasure we'll take that one that fell out discard it for one action and another one. Discard it for a reroll or four points. And a third one. Two point treasure. So now we've failed that card. We have two actions remaining. I think maybe we should sail up to the North Atlantic and clear up some of those passenger ships for space. One, two for one action. I'm not going to start now. I'm going to save that action in case of a lull and go to the next adventure. The Grecian Archipelago. Prudence bids us profit by the first opportunity to leave the Nautilus. The occasion must be serious and our first attempt must succeed. If it fails, we shall never find another and Captain Nemo will never forgive us. 
It's an immediate play card. Gain one notoriety and immediately make an unmodified warship attack. Eight dice roll against the Nautilus and suffer any damage that might occur. If you suffer zero or one hit, pass. If you suffer two or more hits, but rest, fail, but rest, repair, and refit actions cost only one action point this turn, even if it's not a long turn. Right. So effectively, we've got an eight-point warship coming out of nowhere and attacking us. So we gain one notoriety and six. So we're going to take two damage. Damage is decided randomly based on this these dice down here. So one for Nemo, two and three for the crew, four, five, and six and for the hull. So the first one is on the hull. And the second one is on the hull also. Now where's our one that allows us to repair the hull is in the North or South Atlantic. So that's handy. We can recover that. Rest, repair, and refit actions cost only one action point this turn. I don't really want to rest, repair, or refit. We've got no salvage over there, so we can't do a refit. But anyway, that one's failed. And ship placement, three, four, five, one, three, four, five, and we're getting two action points. Okay, so let's draw for the Western Pacific. It's the Kotetsu, Japanese ironclad. Uh, I think we're going to so I'd quite like to go and place a cube in the South Pacific, but I think we're just going to place that there for now. So that was for one. Three, which is where we are. There are no spaces, so we're going to have to flip the Tyne World in the South Atlantic. Four, which is the South Atlantic. We can place a ship into the Cape of Good Hope. It's the Abraham Lincoln frigate out of the USA. And so one, three, four, and five up here in the European Sea, we're gonna to have to flip one of these white ships in the North Atlantic. So which one should it be? Let's flip the Scotia. I have no idea whether a, a tough war, non-warship leads to a tough warship, but that doesn't appear to be the case. I was just looking uh, down here, this ship we sank had a notoriety mark on it, but because of the monstrous design, we don't take that notoriety. So um, we have got three actions. There is treasure there in the North Atlantic. we can spend this card here for two hull, which I think I'm gonna do because we've just taken some damage to the hull. And that's a free action. We could fight the Pensacola. It's not that hard a ship. It's got quite a low attack. It, doesn't have any tonnage though, so we'll probably just save it for salvage. And it clears up some space. So let's make a stalk attack against the Pensacola. Now they fire on us first with a six. So we want to roll lower than, and we want to roll higher than six. So this is an action. That's bad. At least we only suffer one hit. And that hit is on the crew, which is not terrible either. It's not the end of the world. Now we're firing on the Pensacola. We're going to stake the crew for three. Uh, plus one for the stalk attack. And I'm going to chuck a cannonball at it as well for plus two. So we're on plus six. 
So that's an easy win. So that one goes into the north. Now we're gonna save that for salvage just in case I fancy getting some more upgrades towards the end. Uh, is there any, no, there's no notoriety for that. And I think I'm going to make another stork attack against the Hannah Moore. So uh, three, I'm not going to fire another cannibal. Three, four. Yep, we've sunk the Hannah Moore with a 10. And... Let's pop that there with a the salvage as well. We have one action left. We can either fire on another ship. There was no notoriety and no bonus for that one. Or we could search for the treasure there. Let's search for treasure. Okay, so we're staking the crew again, and that's 13, so we get two treasure for that. Just put that on our massive pile of treasure. So we have zero actions left. Let's hope we don't get a lull this round. The transatlantic cable. We're about 500 miles from heart's content at a depth of more than 1400 fathoms as I saw the electric cable lying on the bottom. It's a keep card, and when the Nautilus is in the North Atlantic, we can fail the card and immediately perform three insight and or search actions, but no more than three combined, and for each one we gain one notoriety. At the game's end, pass the card for two victory points, if unused. Alright, so let's see where we get placement-wise this turn. Three, four, and two fives. Now we could take a lull and spend that treasure token for a single action. And maybe go for a cheeky refit. Although the steam torpedoes might be nice. And we could, go, we could instead have a, a cheeky adventure because there'll be two treasure tokens on there. Okay, let's take a lull round. So we're going to disregard the black dice. We place a hidden ship token in three and one for one of the fives. And the other five, we're going to have to reveal a ship in here. Nice, it's another non-warship. We place a treasure token in the European Seas and we place another treasure token on this deck. We get no action points. We must test to see if this cube remains. So we add the number of uprising cubes, which is one, with the number of revealed ships in our ocean, which is two, and roll 1d6. If the result is higher than two, there is no effect. So there we go. That cube remains. If we'd lost, we would remove the cube or gain five notoriety, or, or gain the number you roll notoriety. Okay, so let's discard that treasure token for one action and then take a one action point adventure in this in the sea in the north atlantic here public opinion traders ship owners captains of vessels skippers and master mariners from europe and america naval officers from every country and at their heels the various national governments on these two continents were all extremely disturbed by the business it's a play we fail the card and place one ship token in each major ocean using the usual placement procedure but each revealed ship token so placed also gain plus one notoriety so this is a bad one for us Now we may decline to carry out this action and leave the treasure tokens there, which I think we're going to do because it, we, it's pretty nasty to place one ship in each major ocean at this point. 
So we're going to decline that action and leave the treasure where it is, unfortunately. So we've only wasted one action point. There is another one here we can discard for another action and do it again. So let's do that. One, see what the next one is. The Lost Continents, an 11 point test. Captain Nemo came over and stopped me with a gesture, then picking up a piece of chalky stone, he advanced to a black basaltic rock and scrawled this one word, Atlantis. This is 11 point test. We can put Nemo and the crew on it for plus five. And I would like to pass it because A, it's worth two more treasure and B, it's worth, it's a wonder, so it's worth seven, eight victory points. So we've got Nemo and the crew for a plus five. We've got some more. We can, we've got troubled dreams, so we can fix this. So let's go for this. Right, so we're on a plus five already. That's not good. So shall we use our troubled dreams or we can add to DRM from the accident and, or incident, which would make us six, which would make it 11. So I think, although this one is worth zero victory points, I think this one is probably not as versatile and does the job. So we're failing that, adding two, two, four, six, plus five is 11. So we pass this card. So we collect two treasure or a Nemo. Now our Nemo resource, Nemo's full. So I think we should take that and that for four treasure. Uh, one. Two is the city of Pavlo Perti. Three. And four, hopefully it's a good one. Uh, that's two treasure points. Okay, so let's move on to the next event. Some days ashore. Stepping ashore had an exhilarating effect on me. Ned Land tested the soil with his foot as if he were laying claim to it. It should have been only two months since we'd become, as Captain Nemo expressed it, passengers on the Nautilus. In other words, the literal prisoners of its commander. When the Nautilus is in any Pacific Ocean, so that's uh, Western Pacific Coast, Central, South or Eastern Pacific, we can fail this card to gain two crew and two notoriety or place one uh, rebellion cube in that ocean. So just put that there. Where's all the other dice gone? Oh, here they are. Roll for ship placement. One, three, three, and six. So we're going to get five action points for the one and the six. And one for the Western Pacific. Uh, the Alfred, a passenger ship. Two and three, um, where we are. It's unbelievable how few times we've rolled two here. The Prince Albert is a warship. Now, I really don't want to have to place where we are, but I have no choice. And um, now we cannot place any more ships, so we're gonna have to flip one of the white ones. I'd like to make some space in this north in the North Atlantic. Maybe it's time to abandon it. Let's flip the America there in the Arctic Ocean. That's the three, the six, and one over here for India. Uh, we can't place another ship, so we're going to have to flip one of the Western Pacific ships. Let's flip the toughest one, which is either the Zealand or the Alfred. Let's flip the Zealand for the Achilles. 
Right, so we have five action points. How many cards have we got left here? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, let's let's make a stalk attack in the North Atlantic to at least free up some space there. We don't have to attack the Prince Albert first, but it will give us a minus one on each other attack. And then I think we need to head over to the Western Pacific and make some space there. So if let's go for the General Grant, which is an eight. And we'll put the crew a three. And we're making a stalk attack, so it's plus one, but minus one for the Prince Albert. So it's a plain old plus three against an eight. So that's five plus three is eight. So we take the general grant and I'm going to put it there in salvage. So that was one action. think another attack here for one action and then a move over to there for two an attack possibly on the Achilles for three I'm going to leave the Prince Albert though let's go for the Taiping on a nine so we've got a plus three those two cancel each other out so we use a cannonball. Barely made that just now, but odds are good anyway. So five plus three is eight. So that's a miss. We can use console to re-roll. We've got the treasure. We've got to re-roll on the treasure there. So let's re-roll. Spend that to re-roll. That's a bit better. Six plus three is nine. So we sink the taping. Put that in salvage. So that's two attacks and then we're going to move over to the Western Pacific and nothing we want to do in the North Atlantic first. After sinking a warship in the North Atlantic, I can't remember if we have, I don't think we did. Let's uh, let's attack the Achilles now. So we don't get a minus one because it's other warships. So we don't we don't get a disadvantage on the warship we're attacking. So we're on a plus four, and I'm going to spend this cannonball. Well, actually, let's see. He's going to attack us first with a six. So uh, he hit us, and we're going to take two damage. We're going to take one on the hull, and another one on the hull. Then we are going to spend the cannonball for plus two, plus four, x plus six. So that's a hit. We're going to sink the Achilles and we're going to put that here in the Western Pacific. So one action, two action, three action to move, four action to fire on that. Wouldn't mind trying to refit now, but we haven't got the actions to do it. We can add the steam torpedoes. I think let's clear up one more space. Let's take the Rhone, which is a pretty weak warship. Just check these. Uh, Mail ship. Check these. These were one notoriety each. That was one notoriety, so we don't take those. So another stalk attack on the Rhone. Uh, 
which is a seven, and we're going for plus three, plus four. So that's an easy hit. We'll put that in there. So now we've cleared up a bit of room on the board. Let's go into the next action card. Attack of the Giant Squid. This is a wonder, so we'd like to pass this. Just as we were crowding each other to reach the platform, two more arms lashed the air, swooped on the seaman, stationed in front of Captain Nemo, and carried the fellow away with irresistible violence. It's a 10-point test for the crew and the hull. I might not put the hull in this one, because I don't want to risk any more. We pass, we collect two treasure. If we fail, we lose two crew or two hull or one of each, which is not ideal. So we've got a plus three and we still have troubled dreams, which we're gonna need. Or we can use one of these personality cards. But we do have a reroll there. So we've got five, eight. Let's um, flip Professor Aranax. Which gets us a notoriety. But at least we pass this and gain two treasure then. And it's a wonder. So it's worth seven victory points in itself. So the first treasure is Cleopatra's Palace. Another wonder. And another four point treasure, plenty of treasure. So that was the test. And now we're gonna roll for ship placement. Take another lull here. Otherwise we're gonna place three ships into the European seas and as it is. I think we might take a lull and use the second officer to get a refit, try and get those steam torpedoes. So we we'll disregard the black dice. We've got to place ships in three and five, which we will come over here and place there. And then we reveal a ship for the second five. And it's the Ferdinand Max, which we will place there. We place a gem into the fives, but we can't, so we can place it adjacent in the North Atlantic. We'll place a gem on the adventure deck up there. And we check for the cube, so we're rolling a two. We wanna get higher than two down here, which we have done. And I'm going to spend the chief engineer for two actions. We're going to use one for a refit and one for the adventure. So the first one for the refit. In a lull round, refits and adventure cards only cost one action. So we're going to use plus three for the crew. There are no warships present. We could spend treasure. Let's put that in, two point treasure in to make it a plus five. So eight plus five, 13, we can gain an upgrade for one fewer salvage. We're going to take the steam torpedoes, uh, which only costs us three salvage then. One, two, three, I don't know why I took them from the bottom. And then for the second, we're gonna take an adventure card. The Torres Strait. They're nearly 30, nearly 34 leagues wide, but they are obstructed by an innumerable quantity of islands, islets, breakers, and rocks. The Nautilus, floating betwixt wind and water, went at a moderate pace. Her screw, like a cetacean's tail, beat the waves slowly. This is a keep card, and immediately after moving between the Indian Ocean and the Western Pacific, either way, we can perform this test for plus one notoriety. If we pass, we receive two action points this turn. And if we fail, we cannot save one action point at this turn. So that's a keep card. And um, that's if we go through there to the Indian Ocean. It's worth four 
four victory points if we manage to pass that and get it into the um, pass pile and it's relatively easy to do but do we have a need to go through the Indian Ocean not really it's a bit of a dead end and we're certainly not going to search for that treasure so That was our adventure, right? So we get this treasure anyway. We can discard this to gain one hull or keep it for three victory points. So that's another one we need to inspect at the end of the, uh, the end of the game, or near the end of the game, after the next um, intermission card. Action rises, or whatever it's called. So that's the end of that turn. Let's take the next card. And here we are rising action, a hollow explosion. What sort of craft is it, Ned? From its rigging and its low masts, the Canadian replied, I bet it's a warship. He's hoping it pulls up and sinks this damn Nautilus. So here we're going to add the red reinforcement ship group. But first, we have to discard one random red ship for each of the first three notoriety defeat levels not yet achieved. So that's all of them. So we discard three. One, two, three. And then we add one of them to our current ocean and then fight it. So this is the Omaha, an iron side out of the USA. The other three go into the ship pool. We must immediately fight this as a stork attack. It goes into the fail pile anyway. So we have one cannonball left. But we're going to have to take a nine point attack from the Omaha. So we want to roll higher than nine, but we can use troubled dreams. Or we can take two points of damage. Now we can repair the crew, uh, we can gain the crew, we can repair the hull with, with these to some extent. One, two, it's not the end of the world if we get down to seaworthy on hull. I'd rather not lose two crew at this point though, but let's, I think we're going to take the damage and not take sub trouble dreams. So the first one is on indeed on the hull. And the second one is on the crew. That's not too bad. We can repair them straight. We can get them straight back with these treasures if we want to. So now it's our attack on the Omaha. I'm going to spend this last cannonball, which fails that card. So we get plus two from that, plus three, making plus five, plus one from the stalk attack, making plus six, and we're after an 11. Ah, oh, look at that. Perfect. So we've sunk the Omaha. I really don't think we're going to need any more salvage. So I'm going to put that there. We get one notoriety for that because it has two. So where was that? That was, uh, that was the rising action card, which came out of the adventure deck, out the event deck draw pile. So now we roll for ship placement. And we can take another lull here. Or one, two, five, and five. This is doable. And we'll get three free action points. So I think we'll do this. So uh, for the one, we'll place a hidden ship marker. For the two, we reveal a ship in the Eastern Pacific. A lot more chance of getting a warship now, but instead we draw a sea serpent. Which is different. Uh, yes, that's going in there. Don't have any option. And two in, two in the European Sea. So the first one we can reveal 
something in the North Atlantic here. Uh, Shenandoah. And for the second one, I think we're going to have to flip the Pequod to its warship size. It's the Suffering, an ironclad. Not too bad. Although we have kind of run out of room if we draw, if we roll another five, there is not good. I think we're going to have to go in and clear some space in the North Atlantic or the European seas. But we have our steam torpedoes now. My problem is if we roll, um, although actually we've got space. If we roll a five, for instance, the ship placement priority says we place a hidden ship token, which we can't, or then in the adjacent ocean, which we can't, then we reveal a hidden ship in that or an adjacent ocean, which we can't. Then we flip a white non-warship token in that ocean or an adjacent ocean, which we can't. Then you must draw a warship token and place it in any empty location on the map. If there are none, you immediately lose the game. So we need to make sure there are spaces now. So we don't have to go in there and clear up, but we do have to make sure there are spaces. So the Western Pacific where we are is obviously a fairly easy place to clear a couple of spaces. And the Eastern Pacific, which we can get to with one sailing action. But we are going to have to do a bit more fighting now. We've got um, one, two, three, four, five. So the finale card is definitely one of those five cards. And I mean, it could be any one of those five cards is what I mean, because it's, it's in those, in the last five. So let's make a stalk attack. <sighs> let's make a stalk attack against The city of Adelaide here, I think. So we've got the crew on this, plus four, and no cannonballs left. And we could use the steam torpedoes once per action phase. Let's save the steam torpedoes for the, for the sea serpent, perhaps. So we're going against the city of Adelaide. So we've got a plus four against their eight hull. So that's done. There's a space. Running out of room for the dice tray. There for a bit. Why not? Actually, let's, if we move those up, we can put it there. Probably better. So that was one action. Should we take the Alfred as well? Or should we sail down to the Eastern Pacific and take the Sea Serpent? See what would be... Then we'll use the steam torpedoes against one of these and clear a space in the North Atlantic as an overflow for the European seas and the South Atlantic then. Because I don't think the steam torpedoes are affected by the warships. So we could sail over to the North Atlantic and maybe take on the Suffering. Uh, what did we just sink? The city of Adelaide. So we gain one notoriety for that. So let's use one action to sail to the North Atlantic and then one action to make a stalk attack against the suffering. And we're going to use the steam torpedoes, but first they fire on us. 
really would like the magnetic mines at this point. So that gives us an, that gets us an attack beforehand. So seven, is that a hit? No, that's safe for us. If the result is less than the attack value, well, it's not, it's equal to the attack value. So that's not a hit on us. So that is good. Oh no, minus one for any other warships. So it's not good, they've hit us. And we're gonna take three hits. So the first one on the crew, the second one on the hull and the third one on the hull also. We are merely seaworthy and we're losing five victory points there. I think it might be time to spend our treasure up here to gain that back. We can of course also make a repair action which we haven't done if we can find a safe haven. But anyway we're firing on the Suffren now with a oh, plus two. Let's let's put Nemo on this then if we're only going to get plus two. Plus three. Oh, first we're going to fire our storm torpedoes. Roll 2d6 and sink it on a five plus or a targeted warship on a six plus. Oh. <laughs> So that's a miss. So from now on, we only roll 1d6 on the torpedoes. So we don't sink them with the torpedoes. And now we're going for a normal three point plus three point attack. Oh, should we use the trouble dreams on that? That was a two and a one, wasn't it? Let's use the trouble dreams. So we're going to shift that, make the one into a six, which gives us a hit from the steam torpedoes. which sinks that immediately. And that's a North Atlantic ship. Okay. Um, so that's Nemo. I think I'm gonna spend this treasure to gain a hull back. And I think I'm gonna spend this one to gain the crew back as well. And we're on to the next event cards. We have zero action. Jaws wide open. This is the shark returned when I saw Captain Nemo rise suddenly, dagger in hand, ready to fight the monster. With wonderful quickness, he buried his dagger deep into its side. A terrible combat ensued. This is an eight-point test with Nemo assisting for plus two. So that's five, six, seven. Our dice rolls have gone to pot now. Um... We're going to spend this treasure token on a reroll. Five, six, seven again. I'm going to spend Consail on a reroll. Seven, eight, nine at last. It's a pass. Or we can fail and gain one Nemo. So, um, I just didn't want to lose. It would be losing one, two, three Nemo points if we failed that, which I don't want to do at this stage. So now we're rolling for ship placement. Two, three, four, five, right, two. We're revealing a ship in the Eastern Pacific. Bella Q's. Three, we're placing a hidden ship token. Four, we're revealing that hidden ship token, which is the captain. And five, we are going to be drawing a warship token and placing it in any empty locations. If there are none, you immediately lose the game. If you place it in the Nautilus current ocean, you must fight it immediately. So luckily there are two free locations over here. So we're drawing a warship token. So Koenig Wilhelm over there. And we get three victory points. 
for it really do with this ending there are where where's some easy ships to pick off that Lancaster in the Arctic Ocean is a nice easy space and the Alfred in the Western Pacific again make open up that space Koenig Wilhelm is pretty tough Ferdinand Max isn't too bad as a ship to fight. And we do have the steam torpedoes still at the moment. I think we're going to spend one action to move back to the Western Pacific and target the Alfred with a stalk attack. We get minus one because the Koenig Wilhelm, but we get plus three, plus four, so which goes back down to plus three, of course. Do we want to use the storm torpedoes, steam torpedoes on the Alfred? Um, so that's one for the move, one for this tackle. Are we going to try and attack the Koenig Wilhelm as well? In which case, why aren't we attacking the Koenig Wilhelm first? Let's attack the Koenig Wilhelm first. So they're rolling eight to hit us. Well, that's a hit, but it's only one damage. And that damage is on the hull. Now we roll, let's use our steam torpedoes, 2d6, so that's a hit, and the Koenig Wilhelm is instantly sunk. And now let's make a normal stalk attack against the Alfred, also with a plus 3, plus 4. That's a miss. I think that's just wastes our action. Uh, we gain a notoriety and lose one or two risked ship resources. And I think because it's a double one, it's going to be two ship resources. So what have we got here? Two plus three, five, six. If we spin the first officer, we can get three DRM after the roll to make that hit. Have we got anything else? We have nothing else to give us extra DRM. I think we're going to have to do it. I don't want to waste these ship resources at this point. So that's minus one Nemo anyway. But we sink the Alfred. We've opened up plenty of space in the Western Pacific. But it does mean if we place a warship in the next turn, we're going to have to fight it straight away. But let's see what happens here. A capital encounter. Brilliant. Soon the Canadian announced that the craft was a big battleship, a double-decker ironclad complete with ram. Dark, dense smoke burst from its two funnels. Its furled sails merged with the lines of its yard arms. The gaff of its fore and aft sail flew no flag. Fail. Gained two notoriety. Oh, actually, no, no notoriety for that, but one for the Koenig Wilhelm. So two for this. And add the capital ship to the Nautilus current ocean and fight it immediately. Brilliant. So it's coming at us with an eight point attack. And there's nothing we can do about it. Seven. Unfortunately, it is a hit. Nothing we can do about that. And we're taking three hits. So, first one on the crew. 
the second one on the crew and the third one on Nemo himself I suppose at least the hull was spared now we're fighting the Kerberos let's use our steam torpedoes is this strictly speaking isn't the action phase so can we do that I don't think we can this is still the event phase So we can't use the steam torpedoes. So we need a good roll here. We're going to plus two on the crew. Uh, that's three, six, eight, nine. It's not enough. We have nothing else we can do here. We've used all our emergency actions. We've used all of this. Nothing. Okay, so we get, we miss, so we gain one notoriety and we lose one or two risked ship resources. I think it's two because we didn't roll a one. Just double check that. Yeah, because we didn't roll a one, we lose two of the crew resources. So that was a disastrous round. And now we've got to place ship placement. Still no chance of a lull. So I think Three, four, four, six. I think this is game over. I think we've failed. We needed more space. The, the Kerberos appearing has cost us the game. So in three, we can't place for three, so we place a warship. Um, and we must place the grey side, so we're going to have to fight all of these. If we get that far, four. Another one. Another four. We've got nowhere to place warships, so we are out of the game. Can't reveal a hidden ship marker, we can't flip a white non-ship, and we can place no more warships in empty ocean spaces, so we have lost the game immediately. Imperialist victory. So we've been beaten by the Imperial Navy. So we don't even count up our points, which is a, it's a real shame because we've got a ton of treasure there. No, nope, we can't flip that. Nope, we're out of luck. What a shame. I think we were doing well otherwise in terms of points. Um, let's just read the... Uh, the defeat from the exploration. Pressing the edge of undersea knowledge, the Nautilus is lost with all hands and its incredible adventures will not stir the imagination of mankind for another hundred years. Sadly, the world never learns about Captain Nemo and his legacy is lost forever beneath the waves. What a sad outcome. Um, we... I should have... Uh, I mean, obviously, we could have cleared more spaces. The Kerberos turning up. Three, four, four, six. Yes, that was all we all we needed was one more space for the four. The Kerberos hadn't been there. We could have filled that, and then six. We could have revealed a a hidden ship marker. Where was the the finale? Was right at the end, right after the magnetic mines. So I don't think we'd have lasted that long unless we got a couple of null action rounds. Now we don't score any points, but I'm going to add these points up and put them in the comments in the description for the video. See how I did anyway.
a bit disappointing I didn't get a win on video, but hopefully it's shown you some of the strategy behind the, the ship placement. Anyway, never mind. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. And check the description to see how many points we got. So, that was Nemo's War. Unfortunately, despite amassing a reasonable score of 229, which still apparently ranks as inconsequential, I was defeated because I was unable to place a warship. Towards the end of the game, it's imperative to keep a few spaces open on the board, and I thought I'd done enough. Even if I had cleared enough spaces, with a finale card at the very bottom of the deck, it's doubtful I would have been able to survive the inevitable warship encounters due to ship damage. I think perhaps I was overcautious on notoriety and spent too many actions on stalk attacks where I should maybe have been going for some more efficient bold attacks instead. With the dice in this game, you might be forgiven for thinking it's a very luck-based game. The dice fulfill two main functions. Firstly, to place the enemy ships. As you've seen, you still have an incredible amount of agency in where those ships are placed. You can load up oceans with soft targets and then sweep through them with ease. And you can place all the nasty warships into a corner of the map you never intend to visit again. If you are playing the war motive, you might do the opposite, or mix them up evenly across the board. The second main function of the dice is to decide the outcome of the tests. Again, far from being a major random swing factor, I feel that you need to look on the dice here as a cost for which you have to pay in ship resources, treasure and character abilities. Sometimes you just have to plan to fail a roll. The reward is unimportant and the penalty is slight, so you don't attempt to mitigate the roll. Sometimes the reward is crucial to your strategy, or the penalty for failure is too bad to contemplate, and you'll need to spend every resource at your disposal to ensure you pass. The point is that that is nearly always possible when it matters, especially if you marshal those resources carefully throughout the game. And that is where the skill lies in this game, working out what you can afford to lose or what you can afford to spend to ensure a pass. I've grown to really like this game. It's very challenging, but, when, but rewarding even when you lose. The theme is lavish and pays homage to the source throughout the game, helped by Ian O'Toole's wonderful artwork. Do watch out for further playthroughs of Nemo's War with all the different motives. I definitely plan to do more in the future. So, please remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel, and please also click through to the Board Game Geek and thumb the video there. There'll be a link in the description below. You can also follow me on Twitter at One Man Meeple and at Andy Beta. If you'd like to support One Man and his Meeple, please consider becoming a patron. There is a link to my Patreon below. Again, thank you for watching.